Le climat, the climate change. is changing, and it should continue to do so for the coming decades. In order to understand the effect of climate changes on our daily life, we need to simulate climate variables on a very small scale. In my presentation, I am going to try and explain to you what techniques we need to achieve this result. The first issue we're facing lies in the fact that climate simulation models try to simulate the climate on a global scale with the atmosphere, the oceans, the land surfaces, trying to simulate the energetic aspect of the climate system. However, this means that the whole globe must be simulated and because it is difficult to perform digital calculations and there are limitations in the type of calculation we can perform, it is impossible to simulate all the globe at the same time. The climate models will simulate one point every 200 kilometers, and this is not sufficient if we want to simulate small-scale phenomena such as storms or intense rain, heavy rain, and therefore, it is necessary to find the technique in order to better refine the simulation on a smaller scale. For this, in order to avoid overconsumption or even the impossibility to consume digital calculations, we must find a compromise. Therefore, we use a sort of zoom method. We simulate only a small area. For instance, on the right-hand side, we only see Europe, but we don't try to simulate the whole globe with this climate model. It means that we, we perform a kind of inlay, and with this inlay, we can simulate one point every 10 or 20 kilometers, and the final result will be much more accurate, especially taking into consideration reliefs such as mountains. In the Sivine Mountains in France, there are rain storms or rainy events that would not be seen in a wider scale simulation or other extreme events such as uh, typhoons and storms, uh, wind uh, and uh, the Mistral, a southern France wind. This exercise was performed with different models. Here we have approximately 20 models. They all performed the same exercise, simulating the climate in Europe with a scale of about 10 kilometers. And here we see the results. The first one regards the temperature. We tried to compare to find out whether high, very high temperatures had been modelized in this very high resolution model. Without going into too many details, we have observed that uh, temperatures close to the mountains are better simulated, but the maps also have biases. The uh, difference between the simulation and the climate, climatology, the type of uh, bias that is specific to this model and that are due to the fact that the simulation is still a wide-scale simulation. So if you simulate well the interaction between the atmosphere and the vegetation or the atmosphere and the ground, the land and the water cycle, it means it's still very difficult, even with small-scale simulation models, it's difficult to simulate very high temperatures. It is essential that we can predict the consequences of climate changes, so we resort to statistical techniques because they correct the biases from the models. If we take uh, observations, we take model data, we try and correct the model data based on the observations thanks to fairly advanced statistical methods. In this picture, in this graph, we show the curve the distribution, cumulative distribution curve of temperatures, i.e. the likelihood that the temperature will be lower than a given data. And we see, for instance, that the model has a temperature too low versus the observations. We try to bring the two curves closer to each other with a very advanced statistical method, which is currently being developed by researchers. Voilà.
Thanks to this technique, it is possible to achieve better simulation of extreme events. On the left-hand side map, we see an observation of uh, autumn rains, maximum uh, cumulative rain for a given day in autumn. And we see the uh, Seven mountain area in red because this is an area where it rains a lot and rain is extremely intense. Rain in this area can, for instance, uh, reach in one day the total amount of uh, rain achieved in Paris over a year. The middle map shows the spatial structure, but the rain intensity is not well modelized. It shows here about half of the rain that is normally observed in this event. And with the right-hand side uh, picture with the bias correction, we really see the most intense rain being uh, shown. The global models, the regional models, and the statistical bias corrections are the best way to simulate climate on France during the uh, 21st century when used together. This picture results from a study conducted with Météo France, the French uh, weather office, showing the difference in the rain for a, a near future period 2021-2050 and the end of the century. With two models being used here in France, in each of the columns, we observe that both models predict an increase in uh, the total quantity of rain during the 21st century. However, at the end of the 21st century, the models provide different values. The left-hand side model predicts a much greater increase in the total quantity of rain versus the right-hand side model. So we know rather well what kind of climate change we should expect for the future, but we don't really know what the amplitude of the change will be. There is still a lot to be done in terms of research to be able to simulate the climate in a very accurate way on the global level and at a small scale level. The best thing to do would be to represent the clouds and the water cycle and also the interaction between the uh, variables in the climate, temperature, water, atmospheric chemical reactions, uh, gases in the atmosphere. And finally, we should be able to represent heat waves and summer climate with the help of interactions between the uh, Earth's surface, the vegetation, and the atmosphere. So this is it. These are the main challenges that we're facing and obviously, these are not the only challenges. For instance, we also have to simulate the climate in a town or in a small valley. So we have to address very small scale problems.